Have you seen the full cut of your short film? I have. Are you good? You like it? I'm happy. I'm very happy with it. Good. Yeah. I am. Uh, the only reason that's not out yet, which, by the way, thank you, Stupid Babies. It just crossed 50,000 views on the trailer, and the oh, comments nice. are amazing. Uh, we'll find out, because... It's submitted to a ton of film festivals. You can't that, put it on YouTube until not yet. No, the the film festival have rules, especially can they have, and the, the deadline for that was Friday. So we'll get word soon on some of them, but they have to be. Many of them want it to be shown at the film festivals first yeah. before you present it anywhere. But uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, I knew the cinematography was going to be really good. Seeing the dailies, and it wasn't even the dailies; it was just on the day. Our cinematographer was really good. But I knew reading the script. Um, my, uh, there's, there's, spoiler alert. There's a seven minute speech that the president gives that. I got to audition with that speech, and I I knew when I read that thing, I was like, I want to do this because so, it's 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 really good. And then you add to it the level of the Christian is a Russian. He showed it. Did I tell you he showed it to his mom and dad? Oh no, his mom and dad who are who are Russian have the same heart about Russia and Ukraine, and it breaks their heart because they love both Russia and Ukraine. They hate what's happening. And and uh, he said, I showed it to my mom and dad. They cried. I was like, oh, yay, that's a good thing. Good, yeah. Just Hey, welcome back to our stupid directions of Corbett. I'm not Russian. Vodka. And you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter for more juicy content. Thanks to Patreon folks. Come subscribe to the like button. And if you don't know what we're talking about, it's called What What Dictators Dream About. It's a short film. And the trailer's on YouTube. There you go. The Year of Dicks. Is that what it's called? No. Ah. There was a documentary called The Year of Dicks. Ah. Today we got a video. This is from the Best Ever Food Review Show. Yeah, this is the Indian food that Indians hate. Indian food that Indians hate. Uh, fast food, maybe. Who knows? American food it means you just haven't had the right American. Food. I think it's going to be like I know. I've heard from people here; they're just so sick. Of hearing people talk, hearing particularly Americans say, "Yeah, I'm going to go get some Indian," or "I had some Indian food," and what they say is it's tandoori chicken, yeah, or butter chicken. Although butter chicken is it, it is delicious, fucking bomb. It is. <coughs> but there are some stereotypical things that I'll be interested to see. Indian food that Indians hate. Here we go. These look. Terrifying. In this video, we're going deep inside India's Northeast to ah. experience some of this country's wildest. Those are very dangerous. Don't touch that one. Most exotic food selections. Can you eat it like this? Yeah. Yep. Really? Let's do, do it. This is the state of Assam. Assam! Last time we tasted pigeon curry in Assam's capital, Guwahati. It's almost like eating honeycomb. Like you have to chew the whole thing, suck out the flavor, and then spit out the rest. Now, we're leaving the big city and heading to the countryside, where we'll find a completely different way of life. Aside from growing crops and raising livestock. So this is going to be like bizarre foods. Yeah, I guess. More affordable, more available protein sources. This is my first time seeing them this close. Ah! Okay. Bugs, pests, wow. and insects. Ah! I, I do not like roaches. Most Indians cringe. It was wagging its little tail a second ago. Now it's here and we're ready to try it. Let's go. As for me, Gross. I'm here to try them all. But first, breakfast. This is a carb attack. Is this a usual breakfast for you? Yes. I feel like this is a whole week of breakfast options on one plate. Usually we don't mind carbs in our oh. breakfast. To start the day, something familiar. It's called pita. Mm. We already tried some in Guwahati. Oh, yeah. But it turns out pita comes in many shapes and sizes. Here, they start with a local glutinous rice flour and coconut water. Next, an intense steaming in the pressure cooker. Mm. Mm. It's sweet. That's like dessert. Yeah. Also on the menu, ladu. Ladu is my favorite Hindi word. It means balls. <laughs> nice. They can be made soft and tender using grated coconut oh, yeah. and condensed milk. We like them soft and tender. That uses semolina flour and grated coconut. Oh. 
I'm not. Very sweet, also coconutty, but more dry. Delightful. Sticky rice. Now, I'm a huge fan of sticky rice. You can find it all over Southeast Asia. I don't think I've ever seen it before in India. Is sticky rice popular in Assam? Very popular, Very especially popular. in uh, festive seasons. Last of all, right here, we have the dal. If you know Indian food, then you know dal. Dal, Simmer, yeah. Usually pureed spiced lentils or pulses. Here, they flavor the lentils with turmeric and chilies. To soak up that dal, we've got puri, another Indian staple made with wheat flour. I already know that puri is going to be so good, just that delicious thin flaky uh, flavor. Uh, mm. The dal is nice. It's got just that beanie stew texture uh, to it. So you don't usually eat meat with breakfast, huh? Heavy for Oh, heavy It's too heavy for them to eat meat every day. Oh, really? Yeah. It's so interesting how everybody sees food differently and affects them differently. For me, if I ate five eggs and two sausages for breakfast, I feel great. For me, if I eat this for breakfast, it tastes good, but I'll feel terrible. What's interesting about this breakfast is this is the most normal thing we're going to be eating all day. One of my goals in coming to Assam is to learn more about the unique diet and culture of the food here. And one thing a lot of people eat in Assam is bugs. Yeah, they do, apparently. Apparently. Aren't you from Assam? <laughs> <laughs> Meet Padma. Her extended family lives here, but she lives in Assam's capital of Guwahati, working as a travel agent. Many of the more exotic countryside food she's aware of, but she's never tried them for herself. Do people from North India, are they curious about the bug eating? No, no they're no. very skeptical about it. Even when they come to Northeast India, they're like, what kind of food will we get there? I have to completely assure them that, yes, you will get normal food here. Why are folks in wow. the countryside? I had no idea. Yeah, it's very available. If it was available in the cities, I would have it too, like every day. The Northeast region is known for its biodiversity and its wide-ranging cuisine. Assam alone is home to more than 45 different tribes and ethnic groups, many using insects as a sustainable source of protein, a tradition that goes back to ancient times. Are people collecting bugs themselves? Yeah, when they do go fishing, their main purpose is to get the fishes, but they get the bugs too. So why not have them when they are delicious? Exactly. And if you catch no fish, at least you have some, what kind of bug? Water beetles. Some water beetles. Ants as well. Ants? Yeah, red ants with their eggs. What about grasshoppers? We do. We do. This leads me to you. You have an interesting side hustle. Across from me, Omri. You basically have a silkworm farm here. Yeah. Oh, you wow. Silkworms, they make a cocoon, and from the cocoon, you're developing silk. And so you're selling silk, but what do you do with the worm? Let me show you. Here? No, no, I'm not getting married. Have you thought about getting married? Let's see. <laughs> okay. How does it begin? First, I have to buy eggs. After eight or nine days, it will hatch through larval stage. The worms are fed a steady diet of mulberry leaves. And after four weeks of feasting, they become plump and juicy. How long <laughs> until this one wraps a cocoon? Around seven days. Have you ever held a worm? No. Oh, here, hold this one. <laughs> okay. It's cute, though. It's very cute. Can you eat this as a larva? No. I don't know if I'm sad or relieved. It turns out in some Indian states, folks do cook up these silkworms while they're still in this larva state. Oh my word. I'm right here. That would be career suicide. When the worms are plump and the time is right, they enter the pupa stage, where they spit, spin, and wrap a protective cocoon around themselves. In turn, creating one of the world's most coveted raw materials, silk. When the yeah. cocoon is almost finished, it's a pupa. It's not quite a moth. Then what do you do? That is valuable. Silk is an important industry in Assam, as they're one of the largest exporters of silk in the world. To make one dress from worm silk, you may need up to 2,000 cocoons just like this one. Wow. What about the pupa? Pupa, we consume it. Sometimes if it is in large quantity, then we slowly sell it down. It's both used for making clothing, but also it's something you can eat. Yeah. That's fantastic. Have you ever eaten the pupa? When I was a child. Oh, so it's been some time. I don't remember the taste. Do you have a special recipe for the pupa? Yeah. Fantastic. What do you do? I'll show you. You'll show me. If you remove the pupa too soon, it'll look like this. Green and not yet ready to eat. But if you remove it at the exact right time, you'll have a robust, still <laughs> writhing, squirming, mahogany brown pupa eager to be consumed. So these <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> I've had pupa before. So the first time I ever tried it, I was in Korea. They call it bandegi. They were a lot smaller and more notably, they weren't moving. This is my first time seeing them this close. It's shocking. Oh my gosh. I don't know what I thought. I just thought the cocoon was like life support. I thought we we're taking them off oxygen when we pull them out of the cocoon, but clearly they can still live. They can't become a model. No. Can they? They can. So from here, they would just die. Yeah. Brutal. I mean, at this point, <laughs> anymore like what even is this it's a little ball of protein really like this? yes really can we eat it like this yes i can let's see it ah nice strong composition this man here do you need water 
No. Waters for the week? It was okay. He doesn't look like he enjoyed it, trying to look unaffected. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. Don't spit it out, what is it? Is it in your mouth? Yeah. Did it's you kill it yet? It's, it's moving, right? It's moving. Okay, you gotta bite it. Bite it. Bite it. Bite it. Bite it. So good, so good. Oh my God, it's so juicy. <laughs> okay. That's like swallowing a vitamin. That was really juicy, gushy, not gooey. It's almost watery inside. Yeah, yeah. I gotta say, on a hot day, that might be refreshing. It's like a great but not sweet. There's like a leathery shell on the outside, and as soon as you get through that, like yes. a balloon. It has an aftertaste, I think. A bit woody. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That would scare me a little bit. I've had a lot of bugs by then. This is a first for me. It's great to try it raw, but from here, I think we should try the cooked version, and you have one more insect to show us as well. Let's see. Cooking is underway. First, the pupae, the plural pupa, are boiled. As they cook, these ladies stand by for the next step. This is wild. First of all, I thought they were just going to cook the whole silkworm pupa. Evidently, not. So what they're doing right now is they're busting it open. Oh, they're wow. They're out a piece that they call the waste. I'm not sure why they don't want to eat it, but I'm also quite sure I did just <laughs> eat it a moment ago. It doesn't smell like anything, but evidently that has to absolutely come out. Next, in a pan, add oil, onion, bell pepper, then the shredded pupae. Flavor with salt and turmeric powder. Then cook until you have the courage to eat a full pound of these creatures. I'm curious about a couple things. First of all, we have the pupa here, but we also have the grasshopper. No, we don't. Yeah. We do. We have. Oh, you're saying no, that's correct. No, no, no. It's... Yes, it's wrong. Yeah. Okay. Before devouring our main dish, how about warming up with an appetizer? These guys are not farmed, but found and plucked from nearby rice fields during the harvest season. That's not a grasshopper. You yourself. No, no, some other guys collected from me. Oh, you got people. To prepare, you must mercilessly rip off the grasshopper's <laughs> six limbs. Then stir fry their bodies until they become crispy. Fry is the best preparation for insects. It makes them crispy. They're not gooey. You don't want to just boil it in water. Cheers. That's yummy. The head is extra crunchy and salty. It's not bad. It's fine for me. I've had this many times. Never in India. Is this something that you can find in a market? No. What do you think that is? I'm told that you can only find it in homes in the countryside. It, it like needs this. to be fresh. We have this in large amounts, that's why. Really? Here, he's raising the silkworm, but not grasshoppers. No. Have you ever thought about raising grasshoppers? No, no. How about right now? No. Here, <laughs> we have, I don't know, five pounds of silkworm pupa? So I went into the kitchen, I saw the ladies preparing this. They had to rip it open to take something out. What did they remove from this pupa? Twist material. When you boil it, then it stays inside. It's not bad, but you have to pick it up. To get out. So it's okay if you eat it raw. Mm. <laughs> it actually smells good. It smells like cooked eggs. Exactly like home, yes. Let's go. Wow, it's kind of eggy. It's very good. I can have this. Mm -hmm. Not a ton of spices, it just tastes like a little bit of heat, something a little bit spicy, and a little bit of salt. Outer layer is chewy though. Yeah, it's still kind of thick, leathery, chewy, and then inside is mushy. How often are you eating pupa? Once in a week. Wow. Actually, there is a weekly market near my house. The ladies from the village come there and they bring this particular thing over there. But I never happen to buy it. Today I'm having it. You live in the city now. How often do you come to the village to see your family? Once a year. Just once a year. From here, I'm actually interested to meet your relative because they also have some very unique food over there. And another bug creature I've never tried before in my life. Right. And I've tried a lot. Oh. On this farm in the town of Salona, Gowan, we I couldn't do any of this. minute ride to Gagwa, where Padma's cousin and her extended family live. Through marriage, Padma's family is a mix of Rabha and Karbi people. Today, they'll sacrifice a goat to welcome Padma and in honor of our arrival. With an invitation sent out to neighbors and friends in the form of wafting roasted meats. This one goat will soon be not a bad, not a bad episode. Right. But let's not forget the reason we came here. Here we have a multitude of water beetles. Yeah. I've never eaten a water beetle in my life. When I was a kid and I grew up in the countryside, we had a kiddie pool. By midsummer, it was green and it was full of these things. But back then, I never thought to eat them. <laughs> right now, I'm not really thinking about eating them either. This is just one of over 2,000 existing water beetle species around the world. These guys in particular are found in smaller bodies of water, like lakes or ponds. These are basically complementary when they go fishing. I love complementary. So when people are fishing, yes. if they see some bugs, they just net yes. them. That's wild. I mean, it's super efficient. You're going to get the most protein possible. And if you don't catch any fish, well, hey, you can still eat bugs. These water beetles are in their final adult stage. And the good news is that they're pretty much available throughout the year. Your fingernails match the bug quite nicely. I didn't plan that. Yeah, same talent. 
you personally, you have not eaten this before. Oh, no, I have not. Are you willing to do it? Today I am. Again, guys, this is Indian food. Everything we're eating today, Indian food. Speaking of Indian food, our first goat course will come in the form of a goat curry. But instead of bubbling away in a giant cauldron, this curry is cooked inside bamboo tubes. Yes, I've had it that way. You have? There was a restaurant in Calcutta where they cooked it for us that way. Oh, wow. Ginger, garlic, salt, cinnamon, cardamom, and curry leaves. Oh, eat that. It was amazing. Direct flame. The bamboo is loosely sealed with leaves, then roasted until the meat cooks through. Everybody looks stunning. Is this a special occasion? You coming to here is a special occasion. They're in the traditional attire. I wish my parents thought it was a special occasion when I drove by. A massive feast right here, yes. a lot of food, and then right here we have your family member who lives in this village. This is the goat that was cooked inside the bamboo. It's kind of like a way to braise the meat, kind of steaming and boiling, getting soft for hours. Oh, I'm feeling the meat. It's fatty, it smells wild and muttony, but it also smells like curry. Oh yeah, the meat is so tender, it's very delicious. Mmm, a beautiful mix of seasonings. That masala is on point. It's spicy. It's spicy. Do you feel like people eat more spice here in the countryside or in the city? I think it's the same. Ooh, I feel that though. This is just a straight up meat. Over here is a completely different story. Our second dish includes goat intestines. Oh, wow. For a bit of extra flavor, mix in a touch of goat blood and oh. other goat organs that have been sliced down into unrecognizable bits. Then boil with a bit of salt. In another pan, fry onions in mustard oil. Add chili, ginger, and salt before inviting in the viscera. It's kind of a grab bag. You don't exactly know what you're getting. I'm just gonna get a big ball of protein and pick them apart one by one. Let's find out. I think that might be long. It's very spongy. What do you have there? Spongy too. Long. But then here, I think this is stomach. What do you think about this? Stomach. All right, fantastic. Oh yeah, very different texture. Kind of chewy and crunchy at the same time. You had stomach or lung? Gaming, but there are Never. So many Me either. On there. Making a face. Is it too much spice? It's <laughs> Only too much organ meat I've had is, is kidney country? and liver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Aside from a delightful looking goat head dish, I'm most looking forward to these black crunchy critters. I know you really like bugs. You don't even eat goat. A dish everyone at the table seems to have their eyes on. Can you ask her why she doesn't like goat? She doesn't like the smell of the mutton, but she likes this taste crunchy and fatty. Before they're ready to eat, <laughs> the live bug wings are liberated from their bodies. Their wings and your fingernails are made from the same stuff, and it's uh, not really enjoyable. Now the beetles are ready to fry in mustard oil with a bit of salt, along with the bonus giant water bug that haplessly swam into the wrong net. <laughs> we have an array of bugs. I'm gonna save this big one for you. Okay. But first, we should try these, the water beetles. Cooked beautifully, they're shiny, they're glistening. Mmm, crunchy. Mm -hmm. crunchy. Salty, right. just a little bit of a gush, like a bug paste inside. But not super <laughs> liquidy, not like what we had earlier today. This is very manageable. Actually, These are even better than the grasshoppers. Between the grease and the salt and the crunch, it's very similar to popcorn. This, a water bug. They taste like apple. I've had this many times in my life before. Here's an example. <laughs> see? Did you see the example? I think I did. You bite it in the half? Oh, bro. Oh, the smell. Like a perfume. Exactly. It's your first time experiencing it. Yes. Does it taste fruity at all? A little bit fruity, yes. Overall, are you glad you tried it or is it disgusting? I won't have it again. What I find so interesting and peculiar here is that you're both cousins, yes. your family, you're related, but your lives, it seems, couldn't be more different. You only live about an hour apart. Yes. You're in the city and then she lives here in the village, kind of carrying on these old, old traditions. Do you like the village life more than the busy, bustling city? She likes her village. What do you like about the village? The people can, the farming she does, and her animals. For you, how do you feel when you come out here? The air is more fresh, and of course, the people are more friendly. So what's stopping you from moving in? Opportunity. <laughs> Do you treasure some of the customs that are still held here? Yeah, yeah. In fact, my mother is very strict about when we go to occasions, we only wear the traditional attire. You know, there's many people like you, young, motivated, looking for opportunities. And so more and more people leave the village. But one day, if everyone goes to the city, there's nothing to come back to. I was concerned about it like a few years ago, but then I have seen this new wave of preserving the culture. Even the young ones I see are very passionate about their own culture. They're promoting it online everywhere. Interesting. Oddly enough, technology is a way that people are able to preserve the culture and keep it moving forward. I want to say thank you to everyone. Thank you. You're welcome. The best ever food in 
News Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because obviously of support him. Obviously. He he just but, always does great stuff. Yeah. Always. That was super interesting. Very interesting. Um, the only bugs I think I've ever eaten um, is when we had a we ate this book in third grade called How to Eat Fried Worms. Mm. I don't know if you know that book. It's a kids no kind of chapter book. Kind no. of thing. And they may after we read the book, we cooked fried worms. And it was like a little mealworms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Teeny little, little ones. Everything else, I, I don't think I could do that now. Just well, uh, eating them raw would be the really hard thing. The gush. Eating them cooked, I could, I could eat that stuff cooked. Like I've, I've had <laughs> fried crickets, and those are basically flavorless. They just, it's whatever seasoning you put on them, and the textures. I bet those ones are flavorless. Kind of, no, he said those have have particular flavor, but I cooking them. Doesn't bother me near as much as eating something, eating a bug raw, and the squirting, squishy insides. Oh man, that would be very different than a gusher. I like all kinds of foods. That would be tough for me to eat, and I and wouldn't freak me out at all to have the, the you know with the the intestines cooked with the blood and the organ meat. That, that's just it's 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 organ meat, and I like to. It's, it's great to see that because then nothing is wasted at all. The totality of the animal is being utilized in, in, in some way, shape, or form. There's no waste. Versus there are some cuisines where either the animals are outright tortured yeah. in the way that they're kept before they're killed so that the food can be a certain way. Or they're killed just for one particular body part like shark fin and then the rest of the animal is destroyed. It's just wasted, not used for anything. Um that that I can't tolerate. Yeah, but um, I would try it for sure. I don't know. It'd be so. I think I could do it. Well, here's what's funny: if I had to play a character, there's virtually nothing I would not try to do to make a character believable. So if the character had to eat bugs, I'd eat bugs. I, I just, I would. There's certain things you, as an actor you would do that you probably would never let yourself do in real life, but because you would do it there, I would do it. Like, for example, if I was with him there and it was just me needing to eat the bugs, I'd be far more hesitant and more likely to not do it versus if I was on set, let's say Anurag doing a film and the character needed to eat those bugs. I wouldn't even hesitate. It would, I would just absolutely do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, probably. I'd still feel the same way. But my will would be associated in a far, because it's for a larger purpose. The other one is just me doing it. Yeah. What's the weirdest thing you've probably ever eaten? Your mother. I, I would agree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't eat a lot of weird. On purpose or by accident? I don't think I've ever even eaten like liver or anything like that. Do you have an escargot? No. Oh, I love escargot. Oh. Um, Escargot is delightful, and it's not the snail isn't what gives it the flavor. It's the butter and the garlic and the way that it's cooked. It's it, the, the, the snail is kind of like a a really really firm mushroom. It's texture wise, it's like eating a really firm mushroom. That's all. It doesn't have much flavor. Very mild flavor. I love oysters. Uh, yeah, love oysters. Tastes like a tastes like a loogie. Tastes like the ocean, dude. Tastes like the tastes like the bottom of the sea it's fantastic oh i Anyways, love oysters let us know uh what other videos food videos we can react to down below Just